Hi, welcome back to General Chemistry 2. My name is Chuck White and today's lesson is on acid-base titrations. We're going to talk about titration as an experimental means of determining the concentration of an acid or base in aqueous solution. We'll talk about the end point of a titration and the equivalence point of a titration and the difference between those two things. We'll talk about pH or acid base indicators and uh, how they work, and we'll talk about the detailed changes in pH that occur during an acid base titration. Now, in an acid base titration, typically you start with a solution of weak acid at some unknown concentration, and then you add a known volume of strong base at a known or calibrated concentration. The base reacts with the acid to form increasing amounts of its conjugate base, converting one to the other, and during the time when the uh, concentrations of acid and conjugate base are comparable to each other, then you have a buffer solution and the pH changes very gradually. Now the volume of solution t continues to increase as you add uh, additional amounts of strong base until you reach the end point of the titration where the pH increases very rapidly uh, beyond that point. Now here's a schematic diagram of an acid base concentration where we have a known concentration of uh, sodium hydroxide in the burette and that's dropped gradually into a known volume of weak acid at unknown concentration. Now suppose we had 100 milliliters of weak acid and uh, we titrate this using a standard solution of sodium hydroxide at 0.23 moles per liter. And suppose also that we reach the end point uh, after addition of 58.44 milliliters of base. Now we would reach, we'd know that end point occurred uh, because we would add a small amount of indicator and that would change color when the pH changes rapidly. Uh, we can calculate the concentration of the original acid by first computing the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that were used to reach the end point. And uh, that would be 0.23 moles per liter times 0.05844 liters or 0.01344 moles of sodium hydroxide. At the end point we know that the number of moles of acid and base are the same, so that we, then we can use that information along with the original volume of the acid to calculate the originally unknown uh, concentration of acid as 0.1344 moles per liter in this case. Now here's a detailed uh, calculation of the pH changes during an acid base titration and for simplicity I have just used 100 milliliters of 0.2 molar benzoic acid and I've tried titrated this using 0.2 moles per liter uh, sodium hydroxide. At the beginning of the titration uh, the pH is 2.45 2.45 and uh, this gradually increases during the course of the titration and at the midpoint of the titration where we've added half of the required amount of acid to reach the end point um, then the pH is equal to the pKa uh, which is 4.19 and that's a property of buffer solutions as we'll see. At the end point, or the equivalence point in this case, where we've added 100 milliliters of base, the pH is 8.59, and we'll see how to calculate that value from the hydrolysis of uh, benzoate uh, anion. And um, after the end point uh, is reached, if we continue adding base, if we add another 10 milliliters of base, then the pH increases very rapidly to uh, 11.98. So the end point of a titration occurs when a rapid change in pH of solution causes a color change of an indicator dye. All indicator dyes are both strongly colored and are acids and bases, and typically the acid form of an indicator has a very different color than the base form of an indicator. Only a tiny amount of indicator is used, so the pH is really dominated or controlled by the titration, but uh, the, chain, the rapid change in pH causes the indicator acid-base equilibrium to shift, and because it has to satisfy its own equilibrium constant, a, a rapid change in pH will cause a rapid shift in uh, the uh, uh, indicator from its acid form to its base form. 
and that causes a color change in the solution, in this case from red to green. Now here's a list of about 22 different acid base indicators and they all change uh, pH in different uh, regions. So at the top we have uh, Grenchen Violet which changes from a, in a, over a pH range from 0 to 2 and uh, near the bottom we have phenolphthalein uh, which is a colorless indicator at neutral pH but from 8.3 to 10 uh, changes color to fuchsia. The equivalence point of a titration occurs when the number of moles of added base is equal to the number of moles of acid in the original solution. And uh, at this point, the solution is equivalent to one uh, that was, would be prepared from the conjugate base of a weak acid. So in our benzoic acid example, it would be equivalent to a, a solution prepared from sodium benzoate. Usually, the pH is greater than 7 at the equivalence point if you're titrating, titrating a weak acid with a strong base. Of course, if you do it the other way around and titrate a weak base with a strong acid, then the pH will be less than 7. The pH changes so rapidly at the end point uh, and near the equivalence point that those two things occur at essentially the same volume of added base. And so typically indicators are used as an approximate way of determining the equivalence point of, of the titration. So let's go uh, into some detail about how to calculate the pH at various stages in the uh, titration. And so for a weak acid solution, we can use our usual method for calculating the pH of a solution of weak acid. I present it here, but we've seen it before, and uh, the pH of this solution would be 2.45 if we're starting with a 0.2 molar solution of benzoic acid. At the midpoint of the titration, uh, we can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, or we can use the exact treatment to calculate the pH. Now, remember we have to include the fact that the volume of the solution changes as we add the base. So in this particular example, uh, the concentrations of benzoic acid and benzoate ion are both 0 0.067 moles per liter, and we can uh, then take into account the shift in equilibrium to produce hydronium ion, and uh, in the usual sort of way that we've seen before with buffer solutions, we can calculate the pH of, of this solution is 4.19. At the equivalence point, all of the benzoic acid has been neutralized or changed to benzoate uh, anion. And so we can treat this as if we had prepared the solution with sodium benzoate and the appropriate volume. In this case, the volume has doubled because the concentrations of acid and base were the same. And so we have um, 0.1 moles per liter of benzoate anion, and now I'm writing a base equation because I'm anticipating that the pH of this solution is actually going to be greater than 7. Um, I write this as a normal base weak base equation, set up the Kb, which I can calculate uh, from Ka, um, and uh, in the usual sort of way, calculate the hydroxide ion concentration. And then the pH is just 14 minus the pOH, and that in this case, that is 8.59. After the equivalence point, the addition of more base just, just generates hydroxide ion directly because all of the acid has already been neutralized. And so, for example, if you add 10 additional milliliters of base beyond the equivalence point, then the number of extra moles of hydroxide is 0 0.01 liters times the concentration, which is 0.2 moles per liter in this example, or 0 0.002 moles of base. The total volume of solution is 210 milliliters, or 0.21 liters. And so the hydroxide con concentration is 0 0.002 divided by 0.21 or 0 0.00954 moles per liter, which gives us a pH of 11.98 uh, in this particular example. So next time we will talk about solutions of slightly soluble salts.